Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Mobile Tech Talk. This is the uh, the quote unquote weekly podcast from Mobile Tech Talk. This is a special IFA edition. There is no video. This is just an audio podcast. So me, Craig, and Kurt have come to Berlin for IFA 2016, and this is kind of just the roundup podcast to see what we all thought of our first IFA. So should we just jump into it? Yeah, yeah. let's go for it, guys. Really yeah. cool. So first, kind of want to talk about the most interesting uh, and innovative products that we we each saw <coughs> at the uh, at the show. So I'm gonna speak last as the host. So uh, Craig, why don't you go first? Most interesting or innovative? Um, okay, I'm going to. I know we've had a conversation about why I think this probably isn't the case, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I'm gonna notice. I'm actually gonna say. Was it Lang Lang and the Axel 7? It was not Lang Lang and the Axel 7, we'll get to that. <laughs> right, I was going to say the yoga book, but it's not. I'm, it is, but it's not. Uh, no, because I think someone else is going to say it. So I'm going to go for... I actually think the Nova, or the Nova Plus. I actually prefer the Nova. So that's the, that's the most interesting or the most innovative? Interesting, but not interesting as in the product. Interesting as in the fact that it's actually alive and it is a real thing. Mm -hmm. Because I think what that is going to signify, and I think we had a conversation about it earlier, is Huawei's cementing themselves as a force in the EU market, which is something I don't think they've done up until now, other mm -hmm. than through Honor. And I think depending on how the sales go, but I think the fact that they've launched it in Europe and the fact that it is, uh, from what we've seen, a relatively big launch, I think it means that A, they're here to stay, and B, they're here to kind of improve, and, and um, I hate the word, but iteratively improve. And hopefully, that will bring um, improvements to the EMUI in the not too distant future. So I like the Nova, I think the Nova Plus looks like a silly, throwback to some of their other designs. Yep. But I do like the Nexus 6P, so I like the mini version of that. Yeah, which, so. is, which is pretty much what it is. If any of you haven't seen any photos of the, the Huawei Nova, take a, uh, a Nexus 6P, smooth out the visor. The visor is still there, but it's just the same size and shape, and then scale it down to five inches. Mm -hmm. and, and that is the Nexus 6P, uh, the, the Huawei Nova. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, and if you haven't seen it, why not? Because it's on our website and it's yeah. on YouTube. So it's on like everyone's website as well. Everywhere. Uh, the one, the one problem I have with the Nova is the price. Three hundred ninety nine euro yes. is a lot. It's a very crowded market, and I don't think it can compete with that. that I think price. it needs, uh, it needs to be like two hundred and fifty euro or two hundred pounds. It needs to be a lot cheaper. I think, this. unfortunately, we're getting, we we've got the benefit of hindsight. I think when the new Pixel phones come out. And everyone's well. You look at everybody else's mid, upper mid ranges now. They're all in the three hundred to four hundred range, and I think that's going to become a norm. I don't like it, but I think yeah. it will. Okay. Um, and the fact that it's well, Snapdragon six two five. Yeah, six twenty five. I think that's proven itself to be a good chip based on what we've seen at Eva. Um, so and, wait, 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 wait. Putting yeah. a decent GPU and a modern manufacturing process helps you make a good chip. Allegedly, yeah. So Who it seems. Knew? So it Who seems. Knew? Blow. So yeah, not so in, the, not interesting from a standpoint of wow, this phone's absolutely amazing, or not innovative from oh, this is completely different. But interesting that I think it's going to mean bigger things for Huawei going forward. And I think they might actually start challenging some of the big plans. Interesting, Kurt. What about you? For me, I know it's not really new, nor innovative as such, because it's been around for quite a while now. But I really like Skagen's hybrid smartwatches. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm a fan of smartwatches in general and the full blown software versions of them. I'm really a fan of them. But the hybrid versions is bringing sort of smartware to sort of a general consumer ist type of thing. And with the, with the I mean, it has six months charge battery life for that fast charging smartwatch. And it looks. Did it? Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's it, six it, months. It just runs off a button cell as yeah. well. And you can you can just change the battery yourself and it's yeah, as simple as that. Like like a, put a temp yeah. in the back and just a, off. Just yeah. a watch, yeah. watch battery. Cool. Yeah. Just a watch battery. And that. Sorry, and that, that's the thing. It's a pretty watch as well. It is a gorgeous watch. It and looks, it, sorry, no, 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 it no. looks like Skagen's normal, very minimalistic designs, like Skagen have always been doing for years now. Uh, and the price is not going to take a hit if you want to buy one like, outright. It's mm -hmm. about 170 euros, I think it was, for yeah. the Skagen hybrid watch. Yeah, hybrid it, watch. I think they said it's going to be about 20, 30 euros more than the Dan yeah. version, which yeah, people who pay for pretty watches yeah. know that 150 euros is not a lot so adding 
30 euros on top of that and you're getting smart alarms, dual time zones, calendar yeah. on a, an analog watch race in a very interesting and yeah. relatively innovative way. I don't know if you saw this Garmin stuff. I think I walked past it. I was The question I was going to ask about them is uh, the, the dual um, time zones and things. Yeah. When you pick another time zone or whatever it is to see, do, does the analog watch face just kind of change and go to that time yeah, zone? Yeah. It does. And, and then, then when you click the button or whatever, no, no, it goes no. back. No, no, you press the button and it say you're in UK and it takes the time from your phone so you don't have to set it. And in the Skagen app, you can say, I oh, want my second time to be... New York. New York, yeah. Okay. Um, so you press, I think it's the top button, uh-huh. and sp- the hands don't spin sequentially, they kind of spin out, like they, they do opposite ways. Oh, that's And, th- and then they, they spin to the right time, it takes about, and then it about, it's there for about two or three seconds, and then it just automatically spins back. That's because it knows you only want to see like a, a quick thing. You get that on high end analog watches as well. Mm. So yeah. for something sub 200 euros to get a nice watch anyway, a nice and timepiece. And it, it, it is a really yeah, pretty the, the quite a well-known brand with Oscar. Mm. They make some really nice watches, and I think that's a great way of getting people into the smart watch in their quotes, I guess. It's not well, really it, good, it, it is a, a smart watch. It is, it? it is smart watch. It's a smart, it's, not, it's a smart, common watch. It's a smart, common watch. It's not as smart as the smart watches you get from an Android Wear smart watch, but mm. you get some of the features that a smart watch can have just in a, um, a standard way without having to be more garish about it with a, a full-blown display on it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I can see that. Yeah. Cool. Uh, for me, it's like Craig, it's the yoga book. Oh, it, sure. it, <laughs> it, it, was, it was It was. always going to be the yoga book, no matter what we saw at this event. Um, but as soon as we saw that, I was, I, was, I was blown away. It's not the most high-spec thing in the world. It's not the most practical thing in the world. But it's definitely the most interesting and... Uh, in some ways innovative i think the only thing for me and again we've had this conversation i think interesting totally i think it'd be up there as the most interesting thing in EFA. i just think it go it harks back to the question that i always ask is what problem is it trying to solve and i don't think there is one i think there is three or four problems that it's trying to solve little bits of and then we've got this cool product and I just don't know whether people would buy it thinking, oh, well, this will be able to, do, uh, will allow me to create masterpieces thanks to the Wacom digitizer. It won't. <laughs> Unless they buy the, uh, yeah, yeah if they, um, not if they don't, if they buy the Android version, which, exactly. uh, it, I mean, again, it's not fair, it was pre production, but the Android version showed significantly more input lag on the pen than the Windows version did. The Windows oh, version was yeah. very close to being one to one. It's almost like the Galaxy Notes, where they're so close to being perfect that last two three millisecond lag Mm. is quite noticeable that's what the windows version felt like to me um the the android version was like 10 milliseconds or more it was really noticeable it it was very very noticeable it's like using an old windows like trackpad from like the early 2000s where you moved it against this like two centimeter trackpad and then like you'd look up and it still just started to move um again pre-production can't really comment fully but um, no, yeah, the the yoga book is mine. It's like again, I know it's not the most practical thing in the world. It's not the cheapest thing in the world. It's not the most powerful thing in the world. It's not that expensive though. It isn't. I'm, I mean, I'm, you, I'm you're quite you're getting, happy about that. It's not. You're that getting expensive. like a medium range Wacom tablet with two thousand forty eight uh, levels of pressure. Mm. It's I think it's something like an eight inch area of drawing, like available area. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. And you've got a capacitive. Uh, touch uh, keyboard imprinted in the Wacom uh, digitizer that also has backlights that's turn on and off. Yeah. You get the pen in the box, four gig of RAM, 64 gig of storage, uh, 10 inch 1920 by 1200 screen. So you get a good, a good screen, decent ish performance. And you get in this tablet. This, uh, when I say tablet, I mean graphics tablet. I don't mean it could function as a tablet it's, if it's it good enough in tablet mode. It, it shouldn't. Um, yeah. It shouldn't be used as a tablet because Windows should not be used in tablet form. Um, but and the Android version just shouldn't be used at all. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the, but then again, it's like for me, I could see the the yoga book as being like a really really good um, press machine for things like this. Where I'm in, uh, I'm running from event to event. I'm. I just need to get something down, even if I can't, even if I, for whatever reason I can't type fast enough, if I can just write down quickly the, the most important specs, 
and then just flip it over and throw it in my bag at, was it 600 grams the thing weighs? Yeah, 630 I think. 630 mm. grams, I'm not going to feel that. Mm. It's, I think it's five millimetres per half, so it's just, it, or it's just under five just millimetres under, per half. Yeah. So it's, it's under a centimetre thick. It's fanless, so it's completely quiet. The only real problems I have with it are, A, it uses micro USB to charge, which means it's going to take a while to charge. And that connectivity in general. Yeah, the, the lack, of, the lack yeah, of connectivity. Yeah. It's got a micro USB port for input and output, yeah. and it's got a micro HDMI port. That's it. But, that being said, it's still by far and away the most interesting thing kind of weird for a product in 2016 we've still got micro usb as a connector well they said they've been developing it for three years which in some ways uh, have made me like really hope that it wouldn't be as first gen as other first gen products have been um but yeah no i if if the the strategy a little bit if the yeah if the new if the next gen yoga book or because they said they're coming out with more sizes as well Mm, I if, think that's that's when it would capture my imagination. Yeah, they, they said hit news, 15 inch mm, no, or 30, yeah. 13, 3, maybe. Thir- 11 or 13 mm. would be fine for me. Um, 15 or 17 would just be too big. Imagine how fl- how flimsy a 17 inch yoga book would oh, be. Oh, well, they'd have to they'd have to scale it up in all the dimensions. They, they just couldn't that, get away with it. Yeah, and then that's where the problem is. Well, I think that's where the problem is anyway because it's a 10.1 inch screen. Fine, it's, it's a small real estate. Yes, it could be used as. Um, as like a like you say going from event to event and all the rest of it get a small pc that'll do that or get an ipad with a bluetooth keyboard i mean I uh, no i after this week can you really recommend anyone gets an ipad and a bluetooth keyboard okay long choice of words you could get a windows tablet with a, a bluetooth keyboard and it'll do the same thing yeah but 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 it won't be as thin it won't be as light you want to do the, the tablet even if it's only useful to you once every month but yeah but then it goes back to the price yeah. At the price of like 500 euros, it's worth 550 euros. Like that, yeah. But look, the time will tell. It is first gen, and I think that's probably the thing to remember. It is first gen, it will get better. Um, they will probably. I'd quite like to see uh, a detachable version. No, I no, would. No, I would. No, don't I would. Make it to a surface. Do not no. make it into a surface. Yeah, don't make it to a surface. But like I said, we also found out today they're going to, they're very much thinking about Chrome OS version. Mm. So, which means that they'll probably have to take out the drawing part, but they can still have the um, the capacitive keyboard, unless they have a very, very, very um, special partnership with Google to make this the only it's tablet. It's not going to happen, is it? Exactly. I just feel like they're making too many versions of this thing already. I mean, I, mean, I, I mean, understand that they want to get to every quadrant of the market. Well, let, and, let, Android version shouldn't exist. But let's so, take that point. Is if they if they create, so we move forward and we have Chrome OS. They create a Chrome, Chrome OS version where you don't have a Wacom digitizer at all and you just had the um, laser etched keys and capacitive keys. And they You've lost some it. of its USB anyway. And yeah. You go, well, okay, there's probably better well, options. Then it, then it's, but then you drop it down. So you get rid of the Wacom digitizer in the pen and the half the price. <laughs> yeah, you, so, you, so you drop it down to 250. Mm. That's a really... Becomes compa- a 10.1 inch Chromebook. That, and, and then that's a really compelling It's Chromebook. not as much as a yoga book anymore when it's a standard Chrome OS laptop. Anymore. Yeah. So it's well, it'd still be the... It'd still do the yoga thing, which, as we all know, I'm not a fan of. But you don't... You retain that insanely thin, insanely light thing. And that, that keyboard, which... I, I don't, Craig, I don't know what you felt, but I... It, Didn't I have stopped, a with it. I, I, start, I started it. typing. I wrote a couple of sentences. Not made a single typo. Well, I'm coming from the background. I mean, I know I've got a type cover now, but I used to use a touch uh, touch cover on the on the surface. So I got used to that, and it was miles better than the t- the surface yeah. keyboard. Miles better. It w- it it was way better than I'd expected it to be. I'd expected it to feel like writing on a t- I, I'm writing on an iPad, mm. and it wasn't. I can't tell you what the difference was, if that makes sense. But I could tell you it was different. Yeah. It was a much better experience. And for people that don't know, there is actually haptic feedback. Um, and it also learns. So if it knows you hit the J key, like on the right three, edge or something, yeah, on the right edge, it, it can move the touch target mm. of the J to be where you hit it. So it gets more accurate over time, which is again really cool. It's like a swift key algorithm. Yeah. Kind of thing. yeah. Um, so I'm going to be bugging the shit out of Lenovo to try and get one of these. Hey Lenovo, <laughs> how are you guys? <laughs> so, but no, I, I do think it'd be really good if I can if I can get one. That's great. It'd be really cool to see if we can like get a couple and take them to MWC maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think it's one of those things. 
um, time would tell. I think you'd need to have some time with it. Yeah. To actually yeah. to, to form a, a full opinion. But that, that it's interesting. Yeah, it is. So in summary, what we're talking about here is I like the Huawei uh, Nova phones. You like the Skagen hybrid smart watches. watches. Yeah. And yeah. you're a fan of the, the, I, the I, Yoga book. Yeah. yeah, I think it was quite predictable. I like. Um, mm. I don't know. I don't know why I was so surprised that you liked the Skagen one so much. Seeing as I was there with you. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's a grower. Thought, yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's everything. It's the fact that it's not a particularly huge amount of money even nowadays for a smart well, exactly. watch. And it's a watch first and smart second. Yeah, yeah. which is what I prefer. And it was a classy boost. It was very classy. We, they didn't have any booth babes. They didn't. No, but they, they had very. They had a very knowledgeable product manager who happened to be a woman at the event. Oh, okay. A woman. Which, yeah, which was which was great because so I'm trying to think of an adjective now. Let's just say she was a knowledgeable woman. I was she, trying to think of a funny adjective. Yeah. Fail. She, she was a very knowledgeable woman who happened to be on the on the Skagen team, hmm. and she she was very nice, wasn't she? Kate? She was very nice. She was very accommodating. Yeah. Really. She even let you try one of their fossil watches as well. Yeah, I got to try the, the Q Marshall, I think it is the blue and the red one. Smart watch. Um, just on the watching on the watches front, can we all agree that the Michael Kors watch was absolute garbage? Oh <laughs> God, it was <laughs> so a bad. A designer watch where a design is key. Why would you have a flat tire? And a display? shit display. Yeah. And it, it was it's a shocking. really shit yeah. display. And I know there's probably people that will listen to this and go, there's nothing wrong with the flat tire, they need it for the ambient yeah, sensor. But that's there. fine when you're creating something for people who want to play with tech and yeah. are going to be using tech in their day to day life. If you're creating a fashion piece, there's no room for a flat tire on this smartphone. If you're making a fashion piece, you go with things that are the most flashy. So yeah. OLED, which means you don't need a you don't need a flat tire, seeing as you can put ambient light sensors behind the screen. Uh-huh. So this is just a lazy design from yeah. their parent company who is Fossil. Yeah. So the Michael Kors smartwatch is modelled after the Q founder, I think it is, which was their first one, which was a partnership with Intel. Okay. So yeah, it's it's not the same. It's got like a different process, but the external design is very similar. But yeah, um, you yeah, know the, the Michael Kors watch was was really ugly. Mm-mm. So we that was that was kind of the the most interesting and innovative bits. And again, if you ask ten people, you'll get ten different things. Yeah, there may be there may be a couple of things in the corner of some booths that we've missed out. And yeah. I mean, that's something we found out today. So today is our last day, but it's not the last day. And we decided to go to, um, what was it, Hall 25 and Hall 27. Little Shenzhen and Little Guangdong. Yes. So it's all the small, all the, all the small Chinese companies yeah. have a booth that's maybe two metres wide. But and there's just hundreds of them in these halls. And when we when we originally got to, to Ether in our flat, we, we sat down had a look through all the exhibitors, which was 30 pages of exhibitors. And we compiled a list of like something like 50 of who we wanted to see. Um, and we, we all pretty much wrote off all the, the Shenzhen and Guangdong based ones. We did. Ones. We and skipped we, over all Shenzhen, didn't we? Yeah. And, and, Chagrin. yeah. and after visiting Hall 25 and Hall 26, they were probably the most interesting, most fun um, booths in the entire thing. Yeah, I really liked Hall 25, simply because it was a, a mix of pretty much everything. There was lots of different technologies, you had a bit of VR, you had a, a mobile accessories, you had laptops, you had rice cookers. TVs, you had rice cookers, um, you had... Swagways with seats on them. Swagways with seats on them, absolutely, that was interesting to It, it, it yeah. literally was, and that's the thing, like, people are so excited to be there, um, a lot of the time, it depends what time of the day you yeah, get there. Absolutely. But we were there at like what one, two in the afternoon, and people were still excited, uh-huh. which is really refreshing. Cause yeah. Like we've been here all week doing what eight hour days. Mm-hmm. Well, we've been doing like eight hours at the show floor, and then coming back here and doing like another five or so hours work at the flat. Um, so say we're doing like twelve hour days or something like that. The those people have been doing the same thing for the same amount of time every day yeah they've got to give the same product brief every day to every person that comes in yep and they still seem so happy to be there yeah i mean don't get us wrong some of it was absolute horseshit oh god but, yeah but um you know, there may or may not be a video going up on our youtube channel of a particular smart well sorry in quotes smart watch um which is sort of said 2000 it was hideous but um 
people were still very enthusiastic and wanted you to come and have a look at their products. Mostly it was B2B, so they were looking for um, resellers of their products, but there was a lot of people just wanted to have conversations with you and, and, and potentially get you to look at their products. It was quite interesting, quite like as Dom said, really refreshing. You go to the likes of the Sony booth and they just sit there twiddling their thumbs because they know they're Sony. Um, <laughs> what? No, the Sony booth was kind of amazing as well. Can we can we yeah. speak about the Sony? Yeah, booth? go for it. Segue into Sony. Might as well. Do you want to do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Well, the Sony booth was quite. There's a lot of people there. So obviously, Sony announced their latest, well, the flagship in the X line, which is the XZ, and also the Compact X version. Mm-hmm. Um, but one thing what got my eye, in, I think Donald Lagoon in this one as well, is the Life Suites. Um, oh yeah, the, the Life stuff. Was it the Life Space? The smart UX. home stuff. It, yeah. was, it was quite amazing. Although it's a proof of concept idea. And you can you could tell definitely that it wasn't manipulated by the person controlling the, the devices or by somebody else. I'll give him his dues though. He tried. He, he tried to make it look like he was actually controlling. The it. person doing the whole work there was a woman though who was trying to manipulate the actual data going to the screens and things like that. Also like in behind like yeah. a podium was not Also Most a very are, attractive woman who yeah. also just happened to work for Sony and be really good at yeah. the job. Well, it wasn't a booth babe. They, did, they, you could tell that wasn't a booth babe because she knew yeah. how to work a prototype. Well, what got me, because it, it, it uh, what gave it away for me in the life suite thing, where no, it's not manipulated by somebody else and not the person trying to manipulate it mm. from personal experience. Um, the woman was right there with a smartphone on the on the desk, and she couldn't see the bloke on the on the, the sofa trying to do trying to act as if it was like a real life thing. Yeah. So she had to move around a little bit to try and get the data on there because somebody else in front of her. So that's how I sort of knew that it was a sort of proof of concept for the time being. But if it does turn out to be like that. So what what was it? What was actually happening? Uh, so we have some um, smart projectors and things yeah, like that. Yeah, some really like ultra yeah, short like throw screen like smart. Oh, short throw stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it was ultra short throw that also had a touch screen element to it. So it's like yeah. an IR touch screen. And you so it's like, it, yeah. so I think it's like from, I think it's like ten centimeters from the wall, you get like a thirty inch image. Yeah. That also had a, a touch screen due to the IR field it was emitting. Yeah. So you could like put this. Um, Thing up on the wall and mm-hmm. you can change the ambience in the room so if you had like six of these projectors you could have like one on the ceiling one on the wall pretending yeah. to be a window nice. one being a fireplace and you could go in and change the ambience to i'm in new york yeah. and it like it because it knows which projector is it can say like that's a window so we're gonna put a, a city skyline there that that's the ceiling so we're gonna put stars up there nice. like it, it was really cool and really well done um, but yeah, no, it was definitely a prototype um, yeah you could definitely tell i mean the, the projectors had uh, heat issues yeah. Um, Did they <laughs> say powering off? No. Um, <laughs> High temperature. You could hear the fans from yeah. across the room. Really? Yeah. But like overdrive. Oh, I'm trying to. How big were they? They were probably like fifteen by fifteen by five. No, they oh, they were small. Yeah. They were fifteen, fifteen centimeters. They had one big one as well at the back. Yeah. No. They they had like. Because uh, all the short throws ones we've seen are like about almost a meter by about half a meter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. That's that's. The, the biggest one they had, yeah. which was on the wall. So they had it built into a, a TV unit, like on the floor. Wow. Uh, and it is, oh, the, the projector itself was obviously like, like a good like half meter wide, like big ass thing. Um, but obviously they styled it into this actual TV unit so you could put consoles and stuff. But that was again like the 30 centimeters from the wall giving you 100 inch image. But that was again linked to the life space stuff. So you could again change the ambience and it'd be that. Um, they had was it the Bluetooth speaker light bulbs? Yeah, the, the, that but look sync, like, that, that but could still sync up and be yeah, so stereo sort of, channels. Sort of like design first, but you, didn't, you wouldn't know it was a Bluetooth speaker because mm. it looked like a dining room lamp. Like yeah, yeah. Light. I mean, but I, I did. I've actually different. looked at one of them from Sengled, I think, mm. or Sengali. I don't yeah. know how you pronounce it. I think it's Sengled. Um, um, interesting stuff that. But I didn't take any photos because I was so enamoured by the. And plus, the, the lighting in the place where we were at anyway, you couldn't really get any good photos from it. No. Because it was ambulant lighting and stuff yeah. like that. And it was quite dim for the purpose of mm. product demos, I guess. Yeah. But no, I'll, I'll give Sony their juice. They had a pretty amazing. It was a big ass suite. I don't think it needed to be as big as it was. Uh, no, it didn't need to be nearly as big enough. But, but they, they, they had loads of TVs, uh, their 4K triluminous stuff. But they didn't announce any smartphones or anything like that. Well, they had the XZ and the X Compact. Yeah, oh, of course they did. Yeah. 
Yeah. And they had that. they also showed off the Xperia mm-hmm. Ear and Xperia Agent again. And the Xperia Agent, yeah. The Xperia Agent. And also uh, the new Walkman range and yeah, the signature the, range of devices. So yeah, the L the LG. The um Sony signature Walkman mm-hmm. for three thousand two hundred dollars. Yeah. Nice. It's, it's, a good. Good. it's a it's a gold plated high end Walkman. Because everybody wants a big ass MP3 player. I mean, Mark, Mark, Mark has. Don wants that head unit box yeah. saw as well. Yeah, so like they, Sony made a car head unit, um, which is a single din, and it's just milled from a big fuck off block of aluminium. See, I t- it's another thing. It's got it, it's it doesn't have a CD player, doesn't have Bluetooth, it just has like auxiliary SD and USB jacks. There's the most standard of things, but it still wants one. Yeah, it's and I, I still want one. Like it, it, it's worth more than my car is worth. <laughs> I mean, I know, I get why they're hanging on to it, because it's a, well, okay, let me let me switch it around. Sony will have you think that Walkman is a well-established brand and well-known. It was. I would argue that that's exactly right, Kurt. It was yeah. when I was young, yeah. and I used to walk around with one strapped to my belt to well, yeah. take cassettes. What? I would also argue now that nobody uses MP3 players, hardly. No. Um, and therefore, the walk, they should probably just let the Walkman... Die, but this is, what we, this yeah. is what we were speaking about. Um, this is what me and you were speaking about on the, the Cab to Ether only. It's like some brands just can't let certain things die. Like AMD is still selling uh, Athlons and Semprons and Opterons, yeah. Intel is still selling Celerons and Pentiums. Like, uh, these I get uh, why they do it. I do yeah, get why like they, they do these it. These are things it's... that sold and the things that have yeah. brand cachet still. Yeah. But like uh, you're right, at some time you need to let the things that aren't working die. Yeah. Like how many of these three thousand two hundred dollar Walkmans are they gonna sell? A hundred? I think I think Fisher wants one from <laughs> from his tweeting. I think he's quite impressed with them. But the you're right, people don't have portable music players in there. Well, mm. if, if they do, music they're, it's not they're, they're part of their phone mm. or they're a little iPod. Nano or something like that, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, Walkman is synonymous, for me anyway, from my personal experience, Walkman is synonymous like CD players. And that's what I, my, my first Walkman was a CD player. Yeah, I, ha- I had a Discman. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it's, I know that the landscape is changing, you know, MP3 players aren't as well known as they were a few years back. Mm. Nowadays, smartphones and streaming services like Spotify, Play yeah, Music, Apple I, Music. I'd like, probably say that's more important to the fact that not that nobody wants a personal media player, yeah. it's very few people own the media. Yeah. Like if uh, if Apple came out with an iPod Touch and an iPod Nano that had built in LTE modems that, that can only be used for data, but they, they yeah. had like built into the cost of the iPod yeah, was Apple a, an Apple Music subscription. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So no matter where you were, you could have the entire catalogue of Apple Music. I think that's up. I think that's the way it's shifting it as well, I think. It's going to shift in that direction eventually because I think Apple it, it, will... It's doable. Ki- a- uh, Amazon have been doing it for years with the Kindles. With the Kindles, yeah. yeah. like you can buy Kindles with 3G connections and it's built into the cost of the... I thing. don't mind that as a content, but as an idea, you know, having a, an MP3 player or a, well, a, a device that plays music as well as built-in <laughs> Apple Music or streaming service support because that's what people have nowadays as well, more than they do owning the media itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't. They haven't made an LTE iPod Touch yet. Like again, an LTE only doesn't. The SIM doesn't even have to be removable. Like they like. Maybe it's numbers. Maybe it's pure numbers. Maybe the numbers of people that are buying that sort of technology from Apple now are dwindling, and yeah. people are using. Maybe their because the, maybe it's because it hasn't changed. Maybe. I mean, it's it's how few and far between Apple are releasing iPods at the moment. But you sort of get that the they're, they're not as interested in it because the consumers aren't. I don't know anybody who owns an iPod. At recent generation iPod. No, I just I don't. don't. The last one I bought was the iPod Nano. That was a square. Mm-hmm. That's the last one I bought and bought it for my wife. I never owned an iPod. And you're an Apple fanboy. I'm Apple fanboy. Apple fanboy. Of everything, like for those of you that don't know, the thing, the only electronic items that Kurt brought to Efa was his uh, Apple Watch. Yeah. His iPhone 6S. Yeah. And his uh, iPad Air 2. And, right. a, and a flashlight. But oh, we well, haven't seen yeah, that. Yeah, and a flashlight. <laughs> yeah. But that's Bluetooth now, connected to my iPhone. No, so brilliant. I get both. Yeah. Now, that's why he just wanted us two to go to Efa today. Absolutely. That's exactly it, yeah. It was going to take a monster dump. But, um, but yeah, no. Cool. It's... <laughs> no, no, we're leaving that in. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, yeah, no, it's it's just one of those things, isn't it? I don't, I don't really know what to say. Well, did Sony just... Moving it on, did Sony release or announce any OLED or Q dot 
TVs. No, no. Because Samsung and TCL and a couple oh, of gee. others, but those guys. I mean, Sony really went in I mean, like this year, didn't Sony they? have been doing Quantum Dot for a while, though, haven't they? So that's yeah. new to that. Their yeah. first Quantum Dot TVs were in 2013. So they, they, they don't need to sort of upscale anybody else because they've already done it. So mm-hmm. but, they, but they did make, I mean, we were at the, we just made it to the um, Samsung, you know, the, the home smartphone, uh, smartphone, the home smart home the bit. Home, yeah. Um, home slash smart home bit. Um, and they were talking a lot about the ULED and their quantum dot stuff um, and gaming. Well, Samsung and pieces, yeah. SUHD. SUHD. This is so, this is so confusing. SUHD. It's the same thing. SUHD is Samsung. ULED is Hisense. We got Q, uh, QUHD, yeah. which is TCL. TCL. Yeah. So, yeah, effectively, it's clever ass LED technology or brilliant Q dot back. Um, oh, it, technology. It, case, it could be OLED. It could not be OLED. It no, could, that's uh, that so was sorted out today. That was sorted out today. So I had an interview with. Uh, Lars. No, yeah. Marek. Marek. Yeah, someone that Lars couldn't make it. So I had uh, Marek and Seb, who is essentially partway between an engineer and a PR person, oh. which is probably the best person because if you ever want to know something, go and speak to an engineer. They have very loose lips, and like you buy them a drink and they'll tell you anything they want. Uh, title of the song was Sex Tip. Um, you had to bring it down to a gutter, didn't you? Anyway, go on. Yeah, like on. that's how that's how this goes into yeah, the gutter. That, that's the lowest, the lowest <laughs> ebb we've reached. <laughs> yeah. Of course, but, it was um, nice. so yeah, no, we were speaking about their Generation Eleven uh, manufacturing, mm. and uh, pretty much they were speaking about QD OLEDs, so essentially printed quantum dots. So for people that don't know, quantum dots as they stand currently are just really fancy LCD screens, which do what? Uh, they essentially mean they essentially make it so you have to have less power to drive um, the same amount of color quote unquote accuracy mm-hmm. or you could have extremely high white points relatively <laughs> low black points um, and everything in between really narrow wavelengths for each color I think it's like 40 nanometers in the wavelength per color um, again makes each one really crisp and pure. There's very little bleeding in, um, which means you can get HDR certified. So uh, the current... H- that, by the way. Huh? The whole... Certification. Of HDR should just die. Uh, it's not a thing. Just it call is. it high contrast and be done. No, because it's not just high contrast. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. It's not just high contrast. But HDR... Because HDR means different things for different... Things. Exactly. Like exactly H- why it should just if ever, if, die if, if, with If you fire. talk to a smartphone expert mm. and you say, what's HDR? They'll say, oh, it's when you get a photo that's overexposed, underexposed, and yeah. normally exposed, and you merge them to get one that's kind of the best of everything. Mm-hmm. Um, you speak to a videographer or a, a, a screen manufacturer, and there's like, no, it's far more nuanced than that. Like, to get... UHD certification depending on what your panel type is. So if it's, uh, say you, you've got quantum dots, you need to be able to hit a certain peak brightness, mm-hmm. which I think for OLEDs is I think 500 mm-hmm. nits and for, for quantum dots it's something like 900 plus or like 1000. Um, so if you can reach this super high brightness, you have everything in between. Um, you get uh, I think was it like a billion colors mm-hmm. at all these different brightness levels, and if you have local array dimming like the new TCL sets do, um, which again something we go through the difference between edge lit and direct lit LEDs. Um, if you have direct lit LEDs with say three hundred zones, you're not just kind of guessing where you want to turn it down. Yeah. It's like I can turn down that, that, and that, and I can make these stars look amazing mm. because the white part of the star can be 850 nits, yeah. but the black around it can be 2 nits. And that, that's it. So we were, we were talking about... Um, so QD that's, that's effectively contrasting. It's, the yeah. brightest bright and the dark. Yeah, dark. but it's like, it's not just... It's really I know there's other things, yeah. Yeah, and, that, and again, that's the problem. Everything is so much more nuanced than it seems, and it, like, most people don't want to know everything. And it's, 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 no, it's a really... Right. Don't. People don't want to know everything, and it's also really hard to scale down to what you think might be the most interesting. Does that make sense? Yeah, makes sense. So again, we were speaking about um, QD OLEDs mm-hmm. and they essentially said, um, yeah, OLEDs as they are today, pretty much just old tech. They've just scaled them up to bigger screens mm. because the only OLEDs in TVs are what they called um, monochrome OLEDs. 
to their all white LED, uh, OLEDs mm -hmm. with colored filters. Ah, okay. Um, because uh, as we've seen in smartphones, which have RGB OLEDs, yeah. um, certain colors break down and uh, decay faster, which happens when you have something that is organic. Um, so if I remember correctly, blue is the color that um, breaks down the fastest, which is why if you look at Samsung, like if you look at like a Samsung screen under a microscope, the blue pixel is way larger because mm. it, it decays like uh, twice as fast as another. Okay. So uh, what LG is, LG is pretty much the only people that make OLED TVs. They're um, white OLED panels with all these color filters. Um, and uh, TCL were pretty much just saying like, yeah, OLEDs in their current form are, they're good for what we want now, but uh, direct emissive or QD OLEDs or whatever the, the brand name will be is essentially, again, an inorganic version of OLEDs. So you're not, you don't have these color filters and emissive layers. You literally have the quantum dot that you are stimulating with an electron just like you have with an OLED. Mm. So for people that don't know, OLEDs are they're organic light emitting diodes. You have this one thing, you, you pump electricity into it and it, it glows. Um, that hasn't been able to be done on LCDs before. Um, and with direct emissive quantum dots, we can have that. So we can have really dark darks, really light lights, yeah. really pure colors and everything like that. But that's gonna be expensive. Hella expensive. Especially I think there are two fabs in the world that are currently making test samples of direct emissive OLEDs. So, uh, should we go over the, the big announcements? Yeah. yeah, let's have a chat about them. So, who wants to go first? Not me, because I'm going to drink. Go for it. Well, uh, but go for it. I, I will go for it. Go. <laughs> you you <laughs> kind of said it to yourself, yeah? <laughs> so, yeah, you kind of like it. talking um, yourself in and out. Go for it, I'm going for it. Well, um, shall we talk about the Predator 21X? Please. Yes, we have to. Like, yes, we do. do. The yes, thing model do. doesn't close properly with because it's yes. curved. Shall we just go yeah. over that one? Check out the video um, hands on. It's not the best, but it will give you some sense of just how beastly the beast is. It, it really is. It's, if anybody doesn't know, um, it's Acer's um, new gaming laptop that they just come out with. It's got a dual ten, the GTX 1080 graphics card to it. It, it does. Um, it's thick. It's I, ridiculous. I, yeah, it's I curved. put my phone next to it yesterday. Yeah. And it was only probably about 70 mil. Uh, no, 7 mil. Sorry, not 70. 7 mil off the width of my OnePlus 3. Um, so, yeah, curved 21 inch display, um, which is, is gorgeous. It is gorgeous, and it should be because there are dual 10, <laughs> GTX 1080s that are driving it. 64 gig of RAM, latest 7th gen, um, KB Lake processor. Don't know what that'll be yet, but. It's I, I, be I guess it's a quad core hyper threaded i7. It's going to be beefy. So it's going to be a, a 78 20HQ or something stupid like that. It's stupid names. I think 17.6 pounds, which is like 8 kilos in new money. Um, you mean so proper measurements? Yeah, proper measurement in proper measurements. Um, and yeah, you've got to be a bit of a fitness freak to even pick this thing up. Uh, I was kind of moving around it. There's a couple of um, 3.1 port, USB 3.1 ports on the left, same on the right. There's a couple of display ports and HDMI um, that it's bound to change a little bit before it goes live. Um, and when it does go live, it's going to be around about the 5,000 euro mark. Um, so so you're looking at three and a half to four grand um, based on the conversations we've had. No pricing has been announced yet, but the conversations I was having uh, when I was at the booth and we were looking at this, um, there was kind of a few coughs and splitters and then there was sort of three and a half, four thousand pounds was being thrown Ouch. around, which when you think about it, it's not all that much. It's not that much for what it's got in it. Yeah. yeah, the bill of materials of this lap. This, I, I say laptop. It's uh, it's not laptop. It's no. it's. I, I called it a. Um, what did I call quote it? unquote mobile something mobile desktop. Yeah, yeah, mobile workstation. It's ridiculous. It's was it? It's two ten eighties yep. which retail at should we say five six hundred each? Conservatively, let's say five hundred. Yeah. All right, five hundred each conservative. 64 gigs of RAM, yeah, which DDR4, yeah, which is 100 to 150 quid. Mm -hmm. So we're already at one and a half grand. Get a curved 21 inch display in there. Yeah, ultra wide. Ultra wide, yeah. 
Yeah, then you've got eye tracking. Then you've got, oh, yeah, we didn't even mention that. So they've paired, they've um, partnered with a company called Toby to do some eye tracking. Um, check it out in the video, it kind of explains it there. But the long and short is there's sort of a three step procedure now. If you want to play a game and shoot somebody in said game, you look at the screen, identify a target, scroll to target, and press the, press the fire button. Um, what they're suggesting is that you'll miss one of those steps out because you will look at, directly at the target, won't have to scroll and just hit the fire button because it will know exactly who you're looking at. And they showed in the in the presser, they showed um, Assassin's Creed, but I wasn't quite sure what we should have been looking at because there was nothing specifically called out about eye tracking. But So yeah, it's got eye tracking in there, so throw that technology into the bill of materials, throw in probably a one terabyte hard drive in there with some SSD cache, throw in um, the latest generation Cable 8 processor, which is going to be a number of hundreds of pounds, throw in the fact that it's a quote-unquote laptop, Throw in the fact that it's got five cooling um, oh, fuck fans. Off. Five cooling fans. Throw in the fact that it's got dual it's got power a, outs. It's got a glass window. It's got a glass window so you can see that cooling fans are actually and, spinning. And a battery which, if I actually read, if I remember correctly, a battery that is so large it would be illegal to take it on a domestic flight in the US. Sweet. I think the US has a thing of things, if it's... It lasts about 30 seconds off jar, off, yeah. off power. That's why, that's, why, that's why it's got two power inputs. Uh, I think it's like 100 uh, watt hours is like the limit. I think this is like 106 or something like that. 1,000 huh? watt hours. Uh, oh, 100 watt hours, of course. 100, yeah, 100, 100 watt, watt hours. So yeah. like the, the XPS 13. I mm know -hmm. oh, the, the brand new Razor Blade is 53 watt hours. Okay. Um, the... Uh, Acer or Asus Zenbook Pro with a 4K screen is like 96 watt hours, which is kind of iffy. I'm pretty sure this blows it away. Yeah, no, this is probably, this, I think this is like 106 watt hours or something like that. So it, it'd actually be illegal to fly with it in the US. So it's it's beastly. Um, and that was probably the, the good thing, the weird thing about the Acer, we'll jump across to another one in a minute, but from an Acer, Acer was the first presser that we went to. And so they announced the Predator 21X, which is huge um if you're a pro gamer and you want to be able to lug this thing around and you know and remortgage your house then you probably buy this but then they announced the quote-unquote world's thinnest laptop the swift Four 7 30 seconds Four of 30 seconds yeah um where it's effectively a macbook uh, windows version of a macbook it's incredibly thin it's incredibly light it's got dual usb type c um so that you don't have to carry a bloody dongle around with you if you want to just plug a, a peripheral in so they went from one extreme to the other um, and that's going to be around about the grand mark as well um, I can't remember what the what RAM it had in there but effectively it was having it was an Intel 7th gen KB Lake processor again 1080p screen I'm going to stare at this one when you talk about processors because I, I will kill someone I know I'm a colour bitch I know um, the, the long and short there is that they've changed some naming and it's going to confuse consumers um, and it will. So yeah, they made the world's thinnest and probably one of the world's fattest laptops in the same press conference. Um, Within about like ten minutes of each other. Yeah, they did. Yeah. But that they were that was probably the big big announcements. They, I mean, Acer also announced the Spin, which was basically an Acer yoga book. And also the Swift, which only Don cares about because it's a Chromebook. But yeah. Oh, the uh, the RB. The R thirteen. The R thirteen is cool though. It kind of looks like a, a MacBook Pro thirteen. Um, apart from that, like shitty hinge, and it can yoga, and it can yoga, but it doesn't. It doesn't need to yoga, which is the thing that fucking annoys me. Nobody cares about yoga. No, and you just you in technology or otherwise. You just uh, <laughs> no, I can't. I can't do yoga. Um, but no, it's it introduces instabilities that don't need to be there. Like we all play with the R thirteen. And we all felt that hinge. It's gonna snap. It feels like it. It it's felt like snap. I could have. I, I don't it's know if that's a hole in it. I don't know if that's a pre-pro unit or anything. I felt like I could have broken that hinge with my finger. I, well, I, it wasn't like, the hinge. I, it wasn't the hinge. I felt like the screen would snap in half because I was trying to kind of yoga it around. Either the screen or the keyboard was gonna go. The hinge, really hinge is gonna be fine. Yeah. No, but I, the things connected no, to the hinge are gonna no, snap. That that hinge. Yeah. Like, I don't know if this is the casing for the hinge, but I felt like I could have snapped it with my finger. Not fingers. Finger. Um, otherwise, I love the R13. 14 mm. inch 1080p display, IPS, really nice. You saw it as well, touchscreen. Yeah. Eh. It is nice. Really nice. Touchscreen's uh, a big deal, I think, if you've got Chrome OS. Yeah, because there's new Android apps and stuff. 
But it, so the other, the last thing to say about Acer is um, probably the nicest press booth we went to. Oh, that curry burst. Curry, curry burst. burst. Um, um, energy drinks named energy after drinks. predators and um, Tizer as well. What was named after the Acer? Effectively Green World, Tizer, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they were nice and nice people. Yeah, really nice really people. Really nice people. Um, hey, Acer, give us some stuff. <laughs> Really nice stuff. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. really nice stuff. Really nice people. Re- like probably the nicest uh, booth. Yeah, I agree. It was like secluded. You had to like actually be pressed to get in. Like the public couldn't get into the event. Just it to was, just to segue really from nice. that. I know we're on the the sort of big announcements, but can we just cover off the worst booth we saw? I think we were all in agreement there. Pebble. It was a. It wasn't a booth. It was basically a kitchen worktop. Yeah. Yeah. It was about two meters wide, and that um, was it. It was probably about. They had the pebble. They had six pebble teams. It was, about, six it was products. Though. It was two meters wide and about thirty centimeters deep. Correct. It was a kitchen worktop. It had six pebble watches and pebble two watches, uh, and that was it. And that no time to. No time to. Nothing. We stayed there for all of about a minute and then walked. That long. Yeah. So that was the probably the worst. Um, who else have we got other than Acer? Acer. Oh, for big announcements, yeah, um, we didn't cover Xperia, the Xperia, the Xperia flash. That's yeah, the, the Sony, next com, compact even. So yeah, from a mobile perspective, Sony probably they, they were big uh, announcements. I, I don't know how Sony's going to do in the market. I mean, in the video that I, the hands-on video I did with the compact, I know you did the XZ, mm-hmm. XZ. It is XZ, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I thought um, it was ZX for the entire time. And it's not Z. No, it's, no, it's, it's Z. Z. Definitely You're Zed. welcome, world. You're welcome. Um, yeah, JZ. Yeah. So <laughs> absolutely. So um, I think if I had, if I was a betting man, I would bet on the compact selling, um, outselling the XZ. Really? Yeah. Uh, no, I, 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 I've been speaking to a couple of salespeople. Every generation of uh, compact uh-huh. has underperformed. Really? Like, like, sale, like sales wise, because they're always priced so high. Oh, oh, okay, fine. Yeah, I'm not taking like pe- that. They're selling, but they're not selling anywhere near as much as Sony would have hoped. Depends what they do with the price, then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Should we move on to Samsung? Go on. The most so, say about Samsung? Gear S three Classic and Frontier. Oh, I forgot about them. Yeah. I actually quite like the Frontier. The more I look at it. It's too big. Um, they are it big, is big. Dick, 46 millimeters, is it? 46 mil. So it's. You'll um, probably be seeing a picture now because um, I'm going to do something with this um, so that you can see a picture. I'll probably do a, a post a video of our audio and then do some pictures over the top. I will show you a picture of it sitting on the arm of a quote unquote booth babe at a Samsung event and you will see just how big the classic is. So it, it's stupid. They made it the screen. Uh, 0.1 inches larger compared to the Gear S2 Classic, so it's 1.3 inches. So do that, they had to make the face 2 mil larger, so it's now 46 mil. Um, and obviously to do that, they had to put a bigger battery and everything. So it's just, it just looks monstrous. Um, the only person I can see liking this is Lou from Unbox Therapy, who loves those huge G-Shock watches. Yeah, anybody that's into, I would say anybody that's into sort of urban fashionista, big watches, mm. uh, baggy clothes, like I, I, I kind of get making the Frontier huge. Don't make the Classic huge. Well, it's got a lot more in the Frontier. Well, exactly. A lot more. It, it's, it's supposed to be used for a lot more than yeah. just a bit of fashion, you know, a bit of barometer. Make it fine. Make yeah. it larger. That's fine. Yeah. There was no need to make the Classic larger. I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the conventional. It should have been the Gear S3 Max. That's what it should have been called. Yeah. Because it is. Um, the, Gear S, the Gear S3 Note. What with a little pull out retractable yeah. stylus. S Pen. Do you know what? Samsung, if you're listening to this, make that fucking smartwatch, because I would buy that. Remember the old retractable yeah. uh, mini S's that you'd get on the O2 XDAs? Uh, uh, the, uh, on the mini S's, the retractable ones. Make a retractable one so that instead of this shitty sort of flexi keyboard where you're trying to find T9 style, the, the character that you're trying to send. Whip out your pen and just write something to the person on the submission. I would buy it. Or just make like. You're welcome, Samsung. <laughs> so um, that was pretty much all they announced, as far as we're concerned. Yeah. Um, they had some fridge stuff from like an Amazon. Like, that was actually stuff. kind of a cool fridge, though. That, so it was a fridge with like cameras inside it. So every well, time you shut the fridge door, it take a picture yeah. of what's inside. In comparison, uh, it to, in comparison to what LG are doing with their fridges, I mean, <laughs> Which is they're Windows putting 10. full blown Windows 10 on there. 
Sam's at least trying a little bit, doing things a little bit differently and putting proprietary software on there because he needs it, sort of thing. Yeah. So it, it makes like, sense. Ma- make it for the, the specific use case. Yeah, exactly. The Not o- for Windows 10 on there. The only slight issue with the Sam, because we were at the event when they were showing the, um, the uh, sort of smart home stuff on the fridge. And their presentation was basically everything that happens with this family happens in the kitchen. Um, and so they they basically were trying to um, sort out a birthday surprise for the mother, weren't they? Was it, was it birthday? I thought it was a wedding. A surprise. Do you know what? It was a surprise. I don't know. There was a cake involved. There was a cake. And they left little messages for her on there in sort of some sort of sketch pad and then they used it to buy some stuff and then they used it to um, sort out when they were going to invite people and all the rest of it, which is kind of cool. Um, in everyday life, are you going to use that too much? Perhaps not. It looked cool, but mm. it should come as standard on their fridges, not as an extra. It looks cool, but most things that either look cool. Yeah. That's that's what it boils down to. Um, they had some, some SUHD TV stuff. They had uh, gaming monitor stuff. Gave me a monitor stuff look cool. Um, they they had stuff that was interesting to me, so they had SSDs. Mm-hmm. They they showed their what was it the the PM nine seventy one, which is an SSD controller, um, cache and NAND dies all in a single BGA package, which means it's obviously not for general consumers. It's to be soldered directly to the motherboard. Yep. But it means you can have it like you can have a super fast NVMe SSD in a tablet, or if you're really really wanting an expensive phone, you can have it in a phone. Imagine Samsung putting a 128 SSD in the Galaxy S8. A proper SSD. But they've got to do something because their NAND is still shit compared to what Apple's producing. Well, the reason Apple's is so much better is because it is literally an SSD. Yeah. Apple bought an SSD controller manufacturer and inside the iPhone 6S is so maybe. an Apple-made SSD. It's an NVMe SSD. It's what's in the new MacBook as well. Yeah. And, yeah. they Did they mention much about the Note 7? Uh, we didn't mention anything about the Note 7. Well, that's um, it's a good I'm thing, because the day after we went well, to the Samsung event, exactly. they, they started a mass recall. Um, wrong, but things different, apparently. Let, let's Samsung. just cover that quickly. So, yeah, Samsung are uh, recalling all... Worldwide recall. They've stopped the sales. Note 7. So, in other words, if you bought a Note 7 now and you rock up to Samsung, they will give you a new one. Also, which... don't be an idiot. Don't say mine's fine. It's never. It's not shown on your site. Just don't, don't be a wanker. Just take it, it back. Samsung's recalling all of them for a reason. Yeah. They don't want to risk it. They obviously, they've found an issue when they know what the issue also, is. Also, if they've offered you a recall and you say no, you are also technically responsible, so you can't yep. sue them if something happens. And also stupid, um, yeah. because they wouldn't spend the amount of money they've spent on this recall if there oh, was yeah, a, no, they, a they, substantial they, risk to the people. They are losing a lot of they, money. Yeah, I've, I've, spoken, yeah. I've spoken to some analysts, they're losing a lot of money. But it's the right thing to do yeah. because it, it, yeah, it, it keeps people keeping their phone and stops them bad mouthing it because they get a brand new phone that isn't going to blow up or quote unquote blow up or have any instability in the battery side of things. Um, so they're doing the right thing and it, give it another two months, all this blows over and everyone talks about how amazing the Note 7 is again. Yeah. So, um, who um, else did we have? Uh, we had TCL. Yeah, TCL. Uh, TCL who own Alcatel. So we had the, sorry, uh, bad throat. We comment on the sex debt. Um, what's it called? They had the Move Wi-Fi Time Watch or the Move Time Wi-Fi Watch, Move which time. is the second generation uh, Alcatel smartwatch. Mm-hmm. Which, if any of us remember, I do. Uh, if anyone remembers the first generation Alcatel smartwatch, okay. it's a, it was a piece. It looked like uh, a cheap Garmin fitness tracker screen. <laughs> Um, had like, do you remember we were like when the what's it called the Moto three sixty came out? Mm-hmm. Everyone was like, it's okay, it's got the flat tire because it's not got any bezel. It's not okay. Yeah, uh, it's never uh, okay. It was more okay when there was no bezel on the outside. It was okay uh, when they were the only decent smart uh, smartwatch on the on the market. Yeah, but um, Alcatel decided, fuck all of you, we're gonna put a big ass bezel and a flat tire on this Alcatel watch because because reasons. Um, but no, the Move Time Wi-Fi or whatever the fuck it's called is uh, actually really quite nice. It looks kind of like uh, someone crossed a Huawei watch with, um, oh god, what's it called? The LG. The yeah, Urbane. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but it's, it looks to be quite inexpensive as well. So it's got a one point four inch, four hundred by four hundred OLED display, uh, four hundred milliamp hour battery, uh, heart rate scanner, all that lot. 
uh, but it doesn't run Android away. It still runs Alcatel's custom uh, OS, which, mm-hmm. as much as I love this thing, it was super pre-production. Uh, yeah, it wasn't even a finished product as far as I'm concerned. In terms of software um, optimizations, it was nowhere near where it should be. At. If, you, if you ask Craig, the hardware wasn't ready either. I would go so far as to say that if you've got a product that is that pre-production, you don't bring it to Ethan yeah, and show it to people. It's not gonna you do a nice snazzy presentation that says, hey guys, isn't this amazing? Look at all the sky and look at this thing I'm, morphing out of the sea. It looks I'd, amazing. I'd yeah. almost... Because when we first got there, the watch wasn't even on display. The only things we saw were um, dummy units, which mm-hmm. were on the wall. Yeah. I'd almost pre- prefer they stuck to the dummies on the wall rather mm-hmm. than show us semi-working prototypes. Because the screen was really recessed. Mm-hmm. It was still a capacitive touchscreen and everything, but the diff- where the screen was to the bezel was... And it was rough and... It wasn't yeah, like the metal finished. edges were a bit iffy and the, the button on the side was... Uh, should we say spongy? Yeah, I mean... Let's but like I said, it's pre-pro. It it's is. Hard, it's hard to judge a product that's pre-pro. It is. And if it were, if that was in the sort of B2B area where people were looking for uh, partners to kind of push things forward and sell it, I would have said fine. But on the show floor of, uh, of Alcatel and pushing it as something that's coming, uh, not so much. But hey, it might turn out to be brilliant and yeah, it's probably going to be uh, inexpensive anyway. But it doesn't give the first impressions a great thing, does it? No, nope. it's not the first thing that I'm going to be looking out yeah, for. Exactly. Um, hmm. Whereas if someone had just said, hey, you know the people who made the Idol 4 and the Idol 4S, they're making a Which smartphone soon. great phones. Keep an eye out for Fantastic it. I, I would be interested. Um, so there, there was other stuff at the Alcatel event, none of it was really that, all that interesting. There was a new VR headset, um, different to the one that ships in the 4 and 4S. It wasn't all that great. Um, there was uh, there was it the Pop Ten, which is their Windows Ten mm-hmm. tablet. Again, not all that interesting. Um, what really got me was when we went to TCL proper. Me and Kurt attended the TCL event for mm-hmm. their their new TVs. So they had the X One and the the City Line TVs. These are four K, uh, sorry UHD Quantum Dot TVs that run Android TV, and they are amazing. Weren't they? Yeah, they were amazing TVs. Yeah, um, just it just epitomizes what a, a TV should really look like. You don't need much bezel. You don't need it's, to look at everything around. It's it. like a it's perfect just, window into yeah, into the content. It, it really is, and the, the the way the speaker setup works as well is a fantastic idea with the Harman by JBL mm-hmm. or JBL by Harman, sorry. Um, but it, it, fantastic, really nice TVs, um, and there's sort of attention to detail to put to it as well. The X One with the uh, the cable management, which mm-hmm. you know, cable management, doing, screws, yeah. everything was really thoughtfully it's designed, down to the, the, the last screw apparently yeah. in the TV. And after just, after seeing everything and interviewing them, not say I I believe it. Mm. I think I would as well. And like when you're walking around the TCL event, they show you all the different ways you can mount it. Mm. Like we saw one of them, the TV was literally upside down. And they just changed the speaker around so TCL was the right way up again. And it, it worked. Like, mm. like, it still worked. So it was hanging from the ceiling. Um, and it it was great. Um, so yeah, that's something I'm going to try and review. But if someone's going to send me a four grand TV, I will be quite surprised. I would be too, because we would sell that and pay for our next. Yeah, right. <laughs> like we, like I'd let you sell that. Like, right. That, that, that's not leaving my office. So we had ZTE. Um, you had ZTE. I, I had ZTE. I, I anti-dibs. ZTE. You anti-dibs. And, okay, it wasn't bad. Um, I am going to say one thing, though, and they were probably the worst people at EFA <laughs> for Booth Babes. Um, In what way? They trotted incredibly attractive women out. Um, just to kind of walk around people and just smile at them. And whilst I'm sure lots of people don't mind that, I just don't know whether you can get away with that in 2016 anymore. A technology yeah. event, I don't think you need to. Like, like we said, everyone had booth babes. ZTE had them, Alcatel had them. Like Everyone had them. I feel um, like but ZTE went and paid lots of money for models to come. Yes, and, and I, there is a way to do it. Um, and I don't think they did it right. Uh, like I said, I don't think you need, like you said, I don't think you need um, booth babes anymore. Your product should speak for itself. Yeah. Um, like, like, said, like the Skagen booth, there happened to be a woman who was just very good at her job, and oh, she was also attractive. Yeah. But that yeah. wasn't that wasn't what drew you in. No. It she was, was she was a product manager, a product engineer, or something. 
that just happened to be a woman and she also just happened to be attractive. Yeah. That wasn't, you, you didn't go, oh crap, there's someone in a tight dress uh, prodding, uh, prancing around with an alcohol phone. That, which in some cases was literally what was happening. Oh, in ZTE, that was exactly what was happening. Um, so which, have, you seen, have you seen the Axon 7 Mini? Have you? Have you? Yeah, and that's probably why they had to pay so many people to come along to detract you away from it. Yeah. I loved the X. I'm going to say I, lo- I really like the feel of the Axon 7 Mini. Um, and they literally, so the, the, the presser was about 30 minutes long for the, the uh, 7 Mini, Axon 7 Mini. And 28 and a half minutes was basically talking about how the fact they put the Dolby Atmos in the phone and how it was the, the best phone for, for audio files audio. out there. And then they went, blah, 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 and you got some specifications, then you got to go and play with it because it's not a very good phone. Um, design's okay. It's, well, you probably see the hands on. Um, design's okay. Is it going to cost a lot? No. Um, I, is it going to cost more than it should? Probably. Possibly, um, but it sounds. On good. the upside, we've got Lang Lang CD advert. Yeah, so yeah, yeah this yeah, dude who we, looks li- like we literally got a CD from Eva. I, I can't make my mind up. Yeah, I, I've CD. called him three separate things. He's probably well, he's obviously brilliant at what he does. But on the promotional material for ZTE, he either looks like he is attempting to cast an evil spell on Harry Potter, or. He is Mr. Majika's long lost Asian cousin, or he is the guy from Role Models who's in the park and he's at the live action role oh, event. He's very good at telekinesis. Yeah. Because yeah. he's waving his hands around. I'll put a picture up. Um, and two on action video. seven minis. And two action seven minis. So he looks, he, what he's probably doing is orchestrating and then he's mm-hmm. just about to play the piano because he's a famous pianist. But it looks like he's. Waving his hands around and making making and things fly, films move, yeah. and yeah, it's just wrong because he's an Asian guy as well. It just looks funny. <laughs> <laughs> you call me out on that one. I don't care. It just, just looks funny. And also, who the hell gives out CDs anymore? No one owns CDs, players. But Dom got a mini CD. I, yeah, I also got a mini CD from I can't remember who. Um, Stop trying to make CDs happen. CDs Again, are, CDs have already had their time. They have. Um, there was there was more events, uh, but I don't want to make this too long. Mm-hmm. So I kind of want to pose a question to the rest of you guys, uh, and I'll answer it last. But it was pretty much our feelings on IFA because those of you that don't know that IFA 2016 is our first major event as a as a company. Uh-huh. Uh, we weren't sponsored to come out here. We all paid out of pocket. Would we do it again? What did we think in total? So who wants to go first? Um. <laughs> Well, I'm that was that was very democratic. Yeah, literally just delegated. Yeah, um, I probably would do it again. Probably not next year, due to some things I don't want to go into. But um, yeah, it was a good event. I really enjoyed it. Um, it's a lot of walking. And you need to know. You need to be in the know of things to get into places. Um, that's one thing. What sort of caught my eye and caught my attention this time around. You see a lot of people knowing where we need to go. Mm. Whereas we were sort of not headless chickens, but we were sort of trying to find our way around. Mm. Well, eyeless chickens. Yeah, eyeless chickens, maybe, yeah, exactly. There were other variants of chickens there, though, that were obviously first year noobs as well. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But, Most of them ended up in the Chinese. I thought we did a, a great job this for our first event, anyway, our first event we've been to as a collective. Um, mm. and it, we did really, we got a lot of content out there. Um, a lot of hashtag content. A lot of... No, almost made it through the entire <laughs> podcast without that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, um, it was just great. It yeah. was, it was, I really enjoyed it, and um, Berlin is a gorgeous place, even though there are quite a few people who can't drive properly. Yeah. I mean, the Berlinian drivers We're not are women. Kind of, say that. No, no, literally everyone cannot drive yeah. here. Yeah. The Berlinian drivers. I don't know what it's like in the rest of Germany, but um, Berlinian drivers are kind of like. Uh, if anyone's in the UK and is either done or is doing their driving theory test, there's always an answer on the, the sheet that is so outrageously wrong. Like it's you obviously know not to hit it. Whatever one of those answers is, is pretty much how everyone in Berlin drives. Yeah. Like uh, we we were going to Ifa today and we got that and we we're like, wow, our, ca- our cab driver didn't try and kill us today. So like, they they change lanes and then they'll indicate. Um, and they'll, they'll pretty much span two lanes like the centre of the car will be the centre line so just no one knows how to drive here it seems mm. loads of smart cars though 
True. So, Craig, what about you? Um, yeah, I'll echo um, Kurt's thoughts. I think from a, we, we did as well as we could do, considering this is our first year, and I think we did very well, and I think we really enjoyed it. I think um, if we plan things better for the next one, I think we'll get much better. <sighs> Hashtag content. Yes! Uh, yes! <laughs> I think... Also, though, I think, um, oh, one thing, Kurt, we didn't have to walk everywhere, there were shuttle buses, I found. Uh, yeah, but you found that, yeah, like, for the second to last day. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. True. And I made sure we didn't use them today. Just to Shout out them. to Juan Carlos Bagnell, by the way, for actually stopping and talking to us when yeah. what he really wanted to just to do is get punched in the face so he could carry on creating content. Yeah. <laughs> so fair play for being a gentleman, yeah. Yeah, so follow at some gadgets guy on Twitter if you're not yeah, somehow right. Fair play to him. He's a really, really stellar bloke. We, we, we met a couple other people. We met uh, the Android Central crew, so we met Alex Doby, yeah. Andrew Martinick, and Phil, Phil Nickinson. Yeah. Uh, Matteo was about. Yeah, Matteo Donny, um, Peter Holden. Plenty, yeah, plenty of people. Like I said, it, it's a nice place to. I think that's the thing. It's from a community perspective, it's a nice place to go. Uh, I met a couple of Italian guys who I'd never met before who were trying to help me sort out some bits and pieces on the camera when it was overheating. So that was not nice. me. Not not done. I was uh, sitting down drinking uh, appetizer. Yeah, after a curry vest. So it the o- really the only thing I would say is um, I think from talking to people who are in the know and do this a lot, the PR companies have really let themselves down this year. Yeah. Um. There, there hasn't been a lot of information. It's been very last minute, and they haven't been, um, been kind of distributing information to people. We were supposed to go to the Samsung event on day one event. and the Huawei event, and we were but let down um, badly by that PR company, um, whose name I won't mention, but it, they know who they are. Um, and, and if you just, follow any of us on Twitter, you probably know. As you well. know who they are. Uh, it was just poor. Um, but I said it wasn't just it us wasn't being just first us. time. Like ev- everyone has kind of said, this was a bit of a shit show. Um, I think, yeah, I think that's that's what I would take away from it. More planning, um, but would I come again? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's it's been fun. I'm knackered, but it's been fun. Yeah, no. I, again, I think I'll, I'll echo both of you. We are both. We are all broken, broken human beings at this point. Yeah. Um, it's a week of say twelve hour days, and people that think this is not work um are very wrong yeah. it, it is like uh press gets there two hours before public do if you're allowed in if you're that's something that happened today that's something for, that's a story for another time i'll tweet out yeah um i will punch you cut um didn't do anything press get press are allowed in two hours early but that's 8 a.m and that depends how close you are so if we wanted to get there at 8 a.m we probably have to be up at half six uh-huh. And at half six, nowhere is open to get breakfast. And everybody knows half six is actually half past five in the UK. Yeah. So just so you know. Yeah. It's just wrong. Um, and yeah, there's so nowhere to get any food. There's nowhere to get any food. Where This is like a lad's flat. There is no food in this flat and there is about 30 empty beer bottles. We are literally drinking beer right now. And we are, we are drinking beer right now. Yeah. Um, we're probably going to get delivery and get our favourite uh, dinner as well, yeah. which if anyone's in... Uh, Wilhelm Schabler-Strausser in Moabit. Yeah, you should, you, should, uh, you should go see Wilhelm's Burger. It's, it's a true. really, really good burger place. And, and there's someone doing recycling outside of like that. And the more, I, the more you talk about this, the more and more it sounds like it isn't work. And we are drinking beer and we are getting delivery of food. But and no, there is a burger it, joint down the bar. But, but it, it is. It, it's kind of needed. Because yeah. like I said, if, when you are up at stupid o'clock, working yeah. stupid hours, it's like the last thing you want to do is, is go out and party or go out in town to look for food or anything like that. And it's like, well, there is a, a corner shop below our flat. Oh, mm-hmm. by the way, we had to walk up four flights of stairs to get to our flat. Yeah, and then down them. And then down them. So we literally did probably about at least we probably 16 did, flights of stairs every day. We probably walked about 10 k's a day, at least. I, well, every single day with my Garmin Vivo Smart Plus. And my Pebble t- Time Steel. And your Apple Watch. Which is we did at least yeah. six, six and a half miles a day, at least. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, it's good fun. I'd, yeah. I'd do it again. Like I said, we should probably get a bit more planning in. Yeah. Um, we made the rookie mistake of coming for longer than we needed to. Yeah. Because, again, we didn't know how long we needed to be here. We probably could have done the two media days and two press days. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, two, uh, maybe three or four days would have been fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think. Um, but no, I'd, I'd do it again. I'm already kind of planning for MWC in Berlin, uh, Berlin in Barcelona. Um, 
Um, but no, I hopefully we've made some new PR contacts. We've done a bit of networking, and we we had a good time. We saw products. We that, saw product. Yeah, we saw product and made content. Um, and that that was kind of what we we came to do. Like I said, we, we before we came, we all kind of said, look, the worst thing we can do is make nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, so even making one piece of content was essentially a win and we've definitely done that and we've definitely we've made a lot and we've probably to be fair I mean there's lots of videos we've done and they may not be the highest quality but there's lots of videos giving you overviews and quick snippets of the products we've looked at we've, also, we've, got, got, we've also got written content yeah. in the pipeline that's exactly what I was going to say there's probably quite a lot of content from the people that we've seen and we've got some um, press information from which is also a very difficult thing to get out of some people oh yeah um, hey do you got any press stuff I, I, well, again that goes back to the fact that we didn't get sent all the press information. Um, yep. But hey, it's, so anyway, it's good. It's good. Aoife's good. Berlin's lovely. Yeah. And the people Internet's are terrible. Internet is hideous. Hideous. I'm going to be too too. No, don't even just cut that out. Yeah. Honestly, that was not even a word. <laughs> <laughs> and see, that's how tired we are, guys. Yeah. We need more beer. I mean, less beer and more food. Yeah. And I mean, some beer. Six or <laughs> half a dozen ever. Um, so anyway, thank you guys for listening to our special edition EFA podcast. It is the 5th of September and it is, God, 7 o'clock in the evening. Um, so yeah, I am at mobile underscore Dom on Twitter. Kurt is at Mr. Craig Bradshaw. What? Kurt is not. <laughs> Kurt is at Kurt Colbeck and I am at Mr. Craig Bradshaw. Yeah, there you go. And we are at MTT Feed. <clears throat> yep, you can get us on the website, which is www.mobiletechtalk.co.uk. There are all our other socials that, uh, at this moment in time, I can't remember. <coughs> but you can also go see our Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash mobile tech talk. If you give us a bit of money, we can make better shit for you, which includes shit like EFA and MWC. Correct. So, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, there will be loads of links to the content, the hashtag content we've made. Uh, at E for this week and I'll see you guys next time goodbye see you guys bye how do we turn this thing off and it's rap bitches